Hello boys and girls, Danan here with Headstrong Hats. This video is a continuation of making a beer box hat from 12 pack boxes. The basic tools needed are in the description below, linked to my Amazon affiliate page where I basically don't make any money, which is kind of like this channel. <laughs> but anyways, let's get started and I'll show you guys how to put the laminate on top of the label and we'll put this crown together. So this is the laminate that I've chosen to use. It's from Scotch. It's a single sided laminate and it comes in a 10 foot roll by 16 inches tall. It works really well in um, coating the, the top of the label because if you use um, a lacquer or a clear coat, which I did in the past, it is really hard to work with the hat and you know, running through the sewing machine and possibly marring up the surface. But I'm going to show you guys how to how to lay this down onto your Ulfa mat and press it onto the the top of the label without getting too many air bubbles in there. So the first thing you do is peel off the top little tab there and it allows you to gain access to the the to the laminate. And it's going to be sticky side up so the soft side is down. And once you're anchored, you can peel off the backing. And now go around to the other three corners and anchor that down to the mat. Now that the laminate is secured to the mat, go ahead and make sure that you have your poster board orientated. Orientated? Okay. Make sure that it is facing the, um, the right direction, the 18 inches across. Start from the middle, work your way to the outsides with your roller. Don't get too aggressive with it because I want you to flip it over here and then you can start to work your bubbles out that way. If there are any bubbles, you can take a razor blade and just barely pierce the top of the laminate and then roll the bubbles out from there. Now that the laminate is all pressed down, we can trim off any of the excess material that we're not gonna need. But be careful to trim the correct pieces don't go all the way up against that middle because we're going to need that to glue onto. All right. Now, if you'll remember, we were going to measure down, I think it was an inch and a half. Yep, an inch and a half. So, this line that, that goes from right here to right here. You just finish out this cut. Take your razor blade and see. It's just that, that line right there. You're gonna have to pierce all the way through this and the poster the poster board. Alright, that's loose. Now this line right here, since it's so thick, you know, this poster board is, is pretty thick. What I recommend doing is just taking your razor blade and lightly grazing this. And what you're going to do is you're going to take some of this material out. And it's kind of like a relief cut. If, you're, if you know what that would be, it kind of takes some of the pressure off of the back side of this fold. Because this is actually going to be folded downwards. So what I'm going to do is just kind of peel up some of this poster board that I've scored. I'm not cutting all the way through, I'm just, just taking enough of this uh, poster board off to give me some, to give me some room. See, it's not a whole lot, but you'll be surprised how much that little bit right there is going to make a difference. Now, don't go all willy-nilly bending this stuff. You got to do it kind of easy like this. Kind of work it up. Because if you work it up too fast, you're going to break that seam right there. And you don't want that because then your waterproofing is gone. So just be easy with it. Kind of work with it a little bit. Now 
Now, this is another delicate situation here. This part of the hat is going to get bent inwards. So this is going to go down and kind of make like a pitch, a roof pitch. So what we're going to do is take our straight edge and lightly score a line down here. And what that's going to do is that's going to help the hat fold in like this. Take a sharp razor blade. I start just about one inch from this line right here. Lightly drag it down. See how that's perforated it? Just enough to give me a nice straight bend. So before I get too far ahead of myself, I forgot that I was supposed to have made just a couple more cuts. So what I need to do is just attach these um, lines right here and that will give me a baseline to measure inwards one half of an inch and I can extend that line and that will help um, form the crown as I fold the tabs over onto themselves. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna get our hot glue gun out and set it to the highest setting and wait for it to warm up. And while that is warming up, I like to take my material and roll it over the edge of the desk, and that way I can kind of um, get it going in the right direction to form the roundness of the crown. And then using a straight edge, I go back over these folds that are going to be, you know, bent up. That way they're kind of pre-tensioned so that when I go to start gluing everything together, I've already got my creases in place. Now that we've got the outside done, we're going to take another measurement. I want to come in one quarter of an inch off of the inside of this. Let's see if I can get you back over here. So I want to come in a quarter of an inch. I can just do it off of my mat, one quarter of an inch. And what that mark is going to do, that mark is going to line up just like that. So, take your hot glue gun, zigzag it, swirl it around. Don't put it on too thick, but be generous with it. Now your hat looks like that. 
Now, my favorite scissors are these Fiskars. They have a corrugated edge on them. They're nice and tough and they fit very ergonomically in my hand. But what I'm gonna do now is just go right around this edge and cut these ears off. That one went flying. All right, now by doing that, that gives me the opportunity to set it down on my bench, nice and flat. Take your straight edge like this, line it up right there in the middle, and work it back and forth like a seesaw. And that will give you your perfect dimple in the middle. And that was the purpose of scoring that little line right there in the middle. So somewhere along the way, I lost the footage of me actually installing these rivets here. And the purpose of those are to hold the ears down because over time they have a tendency to want to pop loose away from, from the hat. But I haven't really had a problem with the glue um, coming up from, from the laminate. That seems to work very well. But these always add just a little bit of um, pizzazz or whatever for the looks of the hat. But what you'll do is just take a drill. I take a drill and make a hole there. It does come with uh, a little tool where you can actually hammer it and it'll punch. I guess that's what it is. It's a punch. But I haven't had any luck with that because this is so thick that it won't punch all the way through it. But, you know, this kit I got off of Amazon for like $12 or $13. Some of them come with a little hammer. But, you know, it comes with instructions. It's just basically just you put your rivet on there. You put it through your material. And then it comes with this ring. The ring it will go over that. You'll take a hammer and slide this on there and tap it in. And it will, it will seat that onto the post inside the brim of the hat. What I have here is um, the mock-up template that I made to make it easier to um, cut the tabs on uh, going around this hat. Because what this does, these tabs that I'm going to cut are going to fold up and attach to the brim of the hat. And what I've done, and what you should do too also if you're going to make this you know, on a normal basis or whatever, I basically Taking that hat or, you know, the dimensions from it on just done it on an old natural light box. And I'm going to give you these um, measurements because I've also made an acrylic template for my brim. And that way, this circumference is going to be the same every time with these measurements. So it's kind of like a cheat and it's, re it's a repeatable process. And I'll give you all the dimensions for this. But just know that the way that I have this set up, the dimensions that I've given you for the template are going to work repeatedly for this process. So what I do is um, I've drawn lines to make, mark the center of this, which, you know, this is five and, a, uh, five and a half inches this way. So that would be two and three quarters. But what you've got is four and one quarters from this top line down to the bottom. And then roughly four and almost four and three quarters from this little point down to here. And that's just an, an estimate because what I like to do is I like to have this a little bit shorter and this a little bit longer so that um, when the brim does go on it, it has just a little bit of contour to it. But this little cap enables me to go around and trace a line that is uniform all the way around. Because what I did in the past, 
is I would just take my ruler and I would manually draw little dash lines like this all the way around and sometimes they wouldn't be consistent and then when I would put my brim on top I'd have to trim out extra material and this way like I said I wanted just to have something that was repeatable a repeatable process and I could duplicate all this every time so I'll just go around this with my pencil and lightly score it You could use a dry erase marker. I wouldn't recommend using anything permanent because if you go up onto this, I guess you could probably rub it off since it is the, the laminate, but if you're not gonna laminate your hat, you don't wanna damage um, the, the label that you've, that you've created. So you can see I got a very faint line there. I'm gonna take my scissors. And I usually like to start from these edges and make a clean line right up there. And don't cut all the way to that line because when these scissors finish their snip, they actually go almost another 30 seconds of an inch past the cut. So I usually stop my cut right below it and it'll finish it up that way. And then just proceed to go around the hat, spacing them about one inch apart there's no scientific dimension to it I and mean, you can measure it if you want to and yeah, we well, look we're an inch and an eighth but we're going to continue to go all the way around the hat now now that I've got all those tabs cut. Take your thumbnail and dig in right on the line and fold up. I wouldn't go all the way up because the further you bend it, you're gonna crease this and it might actually wrinkle up the laminate that you've laid down. So just, like I said, dig your thumbnail in, just the tip there, and kind of work these pieces up. and proceed all the way around the hat. Now there's going to be a couple sections where it's double thick because of where we overlaid earlier. You can peel this back like this to make it a little bit easier to cut and bend. And then I would just come back through with my razor blade and kind of finish that off. So we'll go around the rest of that like just like that. All right, now that I got all those tabs flipped out, I'm just going to go ahead and trim off this excess stuff that I got. Alright, now I really don't need these tabs that long. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and trim off probably about a half an inch of this stuff. All right, I know I'm kind of jumping around here, but I've got this um, sewing measuring tape. And we'll just go around here, and it'll give you an idea of what this circumference is going to give you. Twenty-six inches. And now let's test fit my handy-dandy template here. And it fits snug right around there and as you can see I've drawn some some guidelines on there this would be the side and the front and the back and I, it allows me to line up right there in the middle line up there in the back and you can see what kind of perfect fit it's going to be so now the next step is to give you guys the dimensions for this we'll trace it out on a piece of poster board and then we can use the rest of our labels to um, figure out how we're going to let our design lay out on the brim. 
and I, I think this is going to be the best, the best scenario. Kind of laying it out like this. I mean, this isn't church, but it's definitely going to be a viable option to use where we've got logo on all four sides. And if you can imagine this being on the top. And that's where I'm going to wrap it up for today. Stay tuned for the next video where I go over the, the brim installment and the elastic installation. And then we'll go from there on to figuring out what I'm going to do as far as colors on the trim work and sewing everything together. So we'll see you guys next time.